Let's go down to Rome's emergency Q&A video firing up. We got a lot of questions. Let's go. Uh, Obama's been smoking. Uh, skull from Idaho. I definitely think, oh, Idaho. Weird. Uh, I definitely think that this team uh, could do the most Vikings thing ever and win the division at 11 and 6. What are your thoughts? I mean, it's possible. Where I, I don't think that the Lions are world beaters like the media hyped them up to be. I, I think that the Packers definitely luck box that last win against the Saints, and uh, they're nothing to write home about. And the Vikings have all six divisional games left, uh, including the final three uh, final three weeks of the season are all division games, including two at home. So I, I think the Vikings certainly could still be players uh, in this division. Uh, next up, uh, Michael Salas. Uh, personally, I feel like we have some really good talent weapons among our team. I think they become too confident with how they won games in close situations last year, and I think they can win every game. Do you think that's ego keeping them in prep, uh, from prepping for teams properly? No, I, I don't think it's ego necessarily. I, I think I actually think it's good confidence to have, where you feel deep down, where no matter what happens in the game, uh, like if you're down 33 uh, nothing at home to Jeff Frickin' Saturday, uh, that you can come back, you can make a play, but. It, uh, again, people talked about how the Vikings had good luck last year. The Vikings have bad luck this year thus far, right? And uh, it's such a double standard. It's like, oh, the Vikings were just lucky last year. And now when they're 0-3, when the ball literally is not bouncing their way, uh, oh, no, they're just bad. Please. Please, man. Uh, Julius uh, Slocum. Uh, skull from Japan. Kenichiwa. So, uh, sidebar story. Uh, so, we went to this really high-end sushi place in Vegas, and... It's a it's a place where the the chef the, the sushi chef world renowned uh, has been in the states for like twenty years still doesn't speak English and at the end so I, I'm I'm mostly Japanese I found out from that stupid DNA company but uh, so I was just like at, at the end of the meal we we're going to say thank you to the chef and I was just really working on it erogato 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 but uh, we were we were pretty. Uh, we, we, were, we were feeling no pain. We, we were getting after it, man. Uh, so, of course, at the end, when I'm meeting this world-renowned sushi chef, I'm just like, arigato. <laughs> Anyways, uh, if, if the Vikings go 0-4, you think they could be the first team in NFL history to make the Super Bowl run? Uh, I do. I enjoy all our content, too. Hey, thank you. I mean, it's not... I mean, it's not impossible, but it certainly gets a lot more difficult, uh, especially with the Chiefs and the Niners looming. Uh, but as we pointed out before, you know, weeks uh, 11, uh, excuse me, weeks 8 through 14 is where you can make some hay. I mean, the Vikings, uh, Packers, Falcons, Saints, Broncos, Bears, Raiders, including a bye week. Uh, could they go 6-0 and in that stretch? It's possible. It's possible, but got to get things done against Carolina first and foremost, uh, one week at a time. I actually do think that since the Vikings do have the Chiefs and Niners at home, uh, I think that they're going to win one of those games. Uh, I think they're going to shock the world. How, now, it's going to be the, the, the most Vikings thing ever. You lose at Carolina, you lose at the Bears, but you beat the Chiefs and the Niners. <laughs> That's the only way that this can go, man. Uh, next up, uh, Cherry and Limix. Uh, looking at the rest of the schedule, we can finish nine and eight, and uh, take a lot of fight. Lions started one six last year. Don't forget, thoughts on our chance to sneak into the wild card. Uh, I think it's certainly plausible. Sort of like we covered that corridor between eight and fourteen uh, is very winnable stretch. Uh, the Bengals, the Bengals don't look like the Bengals from previous years, do they? They, they don't. And like we said, finishing with three, uh, the final three weeks with all division games uh, certainly does play in the Vikings' favor. Uh, next up. Uh, Janky, Andy, I just want to cheer you up, dude. Hang in there with positivity. You do great work. Oh, thank you. Um, I don't know. I feel like even in down times, oh, it's funny. We, we, we get so many pithy comments where it's, it's like, oh, he's only positive because he needs ratings. And if the Vikings lose, oh, he's not going to get ratings. Our ratings are much better when they lose. <laughs> I, I, I can't explain it, man. I, even last year, like, I mean, rate, ratings were good, but... It, it isn't it wasn't um like, like when things go bad it just like people are drawn to negativity maybe that's why uh like the media people are just default negative because i mean it, i mean it, maybe vinegar does attract more uh, bees than honey who knows but uh, also last week i had a dream you move uh about five houses down why not three doors down if i go crazy oh. uh, from my childhood home you threw a football and i just want to ask uh, are you an athlete or not i would say no <laughs> Uh, even though, you know, I played high school sports, um, played baseball at a decent level. I, uh, not an athlete. Nah, nah. Connor, man. 
Uh, I think Kevin O'Connell is a good. Oh, actually, actually, funny thing on that. So, uh, I can still deadlift around 405, but I, I just installed one of those grab bars uh, in, in our downstairs uh, shower because just like, uh, oh, load it. I've fallen and I can't get up. And I sank that thing in, man. Like three, three inch screws straight into the stud. That thing ain't going nowhere because it's just like, I'm worried about slipping in the tub and I, I'm starting to get to that age where it's like, help, I've fallen and I can't get up. I know. No wonder these Q&A videos take so long because I, I go on tangents. Anyways, uh, Connor, man, I think Kevin Connell is a good play caller and can call uh, and have a good game script like in Philly. I get the ball quick and it was well planned, but sometimes we go away from Jefferson early and ever we go to him, things uh, always happen. It's crazy. And yeah, th they do need to work on manufacturing touches for Jefferson and I, I think that Kevin O'Connell needs to take more advantage of the way the defenses react to JJ. I mean, like whenever, wherever he goes, two, three, four defenders go. And that show, should open up the rest of the offense. But it's been sort of helter-skelter at times. Uh, Twinkie Main, realistically, what quarterback do you think we should go for in 2024 draft? Or what quarterback would be the best fit for us? Uh, say we get a top 10 pick. Well, Vikings probably won't be drafting in, in the top 10, but they could certainly trade up. Uh, the Chiefs trade up from 27 to 10 uh, with Mahomes in 2017. Hold on. Zoom in and enhance. Enhance. Sorry, just bringing up our quarterbacks list here. Uh, if only I had been prepared like a professional. But whatever. Loading. Things always load the slowest, slowest when you need them the most. All right, so here we go. Uh, 2024 quarterback draft prospects. Now, this was made like three weeks ago. So, I mean, Shador Sanders, a little bit high, maybe. Uh, Bo Nix, maybe a little bit low. Who knows? Uh, but in, in terms of quarterbacks, I mean, Caleb Williams is still the crown jewel. I think Drake May is basically Justin Herbert. Uh, Michael Penix Jr., I like a, Michael Penix Jr. is just a larger Tua. And I, I loved him at, uh, at Indiana. He's doing great things in Washington. Um, I think that he's probably going to be a top 10 pick. Quinn Ewers uh, certainly has his upside. Uh, Bo Nix, J.J. McCarthy, uh, Jaden Daniels uh, is low-key been a stud this year. And there's like 17 other quarterbacks on here that are worthy of a discussion. I mean, so uh, this potentially could be the deepest quarterback draft uh, in 2020 uh, since 1983 and could even be better than that. Uh, let's see here. Joe Brown starting out 0-3 is obviously far from ideal. However, now that they're in this position, they are in a perfect position to tank for a top pick and strengthen for the future of the franchise. Uh, will they take this godsend opportunity or will they blow it like every other time? Well, here's the thing, too. Teams will never tank. Like, sure, uh, at the trade deadline, maybe they trade Kirk or Daniil. But absent that, you think that this team is – you think that this collection of professionals is actually going to go out and intentionally try to lose a game? It's not going to happen. It's simply not going to happen. We've been over this 17,000 times. So basically, you're just rooting for your team to lose, which I think is bad karma. So no, they're not going. They're not going to tank. Nah, it ain't gonna happen, man. Uh, plus, you don't have to tank to find a quarterback, especially in this freaking draft. That's all. Again, the Chiefs went 12 and four the season before they drafted Mahomes. Like no one ever talks about that. Uh, George uh, M. Uh, what a mandate love the show specifically for the Vikings. Uh, how to rank the quarterback draft class this year, uh, and would you consider yourself a Swifty? <sighs> Maybe not consider myself a Swifty. I, I mean, I like some of her songs. It's catchy. There you go. Uh, but specifically for the Vikings, Williams, May, Penix, Ewers. Sanders, I can't quit him. I, I don't care if he had a bad game against Oregon. Don't care. McCarthy, Nix, Daniels, Van Dyke, Milton, Travis. I don't know. It's sort of all over the place right now, man. Uh, Anna So H. Do you think anything changed for Kevin O'Connell since last season? Uh, la uh, last season, it seemed like guys were dialed in, believing in the season. Uh, has been what it is. Uh, could veteran leadership uh, even be part of the equation? Outlook seems pretty mixed for the McVay coaching tree this year. Um, not sure. I, I feel like Kevin. I actually do feel like Kevin McConnell is a little bit more confident uh, in, in his job, and maybe that leads to some complacency. Or you know, the Vikings have just had amazing luck last year, and then they've had very poopa uh, luck this year. I don't think it's necessarily veteran leadership. I mean, yeah, you do lose Dalvin and Thielen and Patrick Peterson and uh, Zadarius and Diesel Dalvin, sure, uh, but it's not like 
Harrison isn't here. It's not like Jordan Hicks isn't here. It's not like Daniil isn't here. It's not like uh, O'Neal and uh, JJ and Madison and Kirk Cousins aren't here. Nah. Uh, Aaron uh, Potato, uh, do you think uh, we could? Uh, do you think we could be back on track after uh, uh, after around a mid end of the season with how our schedule looks after the Niners game? Yes. Yes, sure, sure, sure. Oh, wrong one. Yes, sure, sure, sure. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That's. I mean, honestly, if you if you get to the bye seven and five, I, I think you're in, in pretty decent shape. Uh, next uh, showdown. Wondering if you're planning on doing a mock draft, uh, being we have the third pick for fun. I mean, we could. We 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 could. So for top two picks probably uh, would be Williams and May. We'll take Penix at three. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, Justin Stolenberg. Let's go from the Netherlands. I don't know any Dutch, but what up? Uh, I, I love, oh, I, I love, uh, Johan Cruyff, Cruyff, Cruyff. Uh, do you think our record will still be 0-3, uh, if we still had Thielen, Kendricks, da, 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 da? yes. Uh, I understand people are still hyping up Thielen because he had a, a boom game uh, against the, uh, against the Seahawks last week. No, Addison is a clear upgrade over Thielen. Um, you know, Pace Jr. and Asuma are clear upgrades over Kendricks at this stage of their career. I, again, people... People think that it's 2018 Thielen and Kendricks. It's not. It's 2023 Thielen and Kendricks, man. All right. So, it, again, it's much better to move on from a player a year too early versus a year too late. Uh, planes and gains. I really think we're not getting to the quarterback because our corners are playing 8 to 10 yards off, and the quarterback can just throw it uh, right away. Uh, there's no time to get home, and it was – and it was working for them because uh, we were forced to make open field tackles against bigger wide receivers. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Uh, it, it did seem like they were playing off a quite a, quite a bit, uh, but also, I mean, a lot of it was the Chargers doing a phenomenal job picking up the blitz. Like it was just picked up, and, and Herbert. Uh, well, sometimes they did get home, and the, and Herbert just bounced off of them. He is, he is a big time quarterback and a, a large body quarterback as well. Uh, so. So, sort of is what it is. Uh, Orlando Kang, let's go from Canada. Old Canada. Uh, do you think there's a valid reason KJ is still out there on wi two wide receiver sets? Is it because of run blocking or is Kevin O'Connell being a little stubborn? So far, I've seen a lot more uh, from jo uh, Jordan Anderson, and he deserves the wide receiver too. A lot of it is run blocking. Um, and KJ, I mean... Say what you will. I mean, KJ has had some rough moments this season with drops and whatnot, but Kirk Cousins still trusts him in clutch situations, uh, as evidenced by the 36-yard touchdown. Um, and Addison, I mean, there, there's still, I mean, there's still a lot for him to work on. I mean, he he's had a huge impact so far this season. He will still get his, uh, but I don't know. I, I I don't think there necessarily is a pecking order, uh, but in terms of certain uh, situations, uh, one will be in over the other. Uh, Miles. Just like a, a bullpen in baseball, when you insert a better option into it, there is a twofold result. You're improving with not only the better talent, but also improving by subtracting the lesser talent. I hope the Dalton Reisner addition and ending room subtraction makes our offensive line at least average solid uh, uh, instead of shaky and frail. Yes. Yes. Uh, Cody's nuts. Uh, I have th this weird feeling we either go... 0-11 oh, and, and one-score games are going a massive powerhouse run and go undefeated the rest of the season once Reisner hits the field. If the Cardinals can beat the uh, can beat Dallas, the Vikings can beat Kansas City and the Niners. How likely is Reisner going to help? I think he will shore up things in the run game. I think that he certainly will uh, shore up things uh, in pass protection. And you know, people make a, a big deal. It's like, oh, well, what, uh, Ed Ingram had a good PFF grade. He was really amped up by his uh, play in the run game, but still six sacks and 13 pressures. Can't have that through three freaking games, man. Uh, Jacob Walker Sweeney. I still have hopes for 2023 season. I'm uh, I'm thinking wild card is a possibility. However, uh, looking towards 2024 draft, if we're drafting in the middle of the pack, how do you foresee the Vikings drafting in the first round? I think it'll still be a QB. Although, I don't know. Like if uh, Cooper Beebe, the the huge uh, guard from Kansas State, is there chilling? That's cow. Let's go, man. And hell, grab a quarterback in the second round, man. That's how deep this class is. Uh, D. Hoyton. Uh, I know the defense uh, plays a blitzing zone, but why can't our corners uh, ever have pressure and contest the passes? It's kind of a fair question. Like, I like if if you're going to beat, I mean, just pl be playing press man. And one of the more infuriating plays when the Vikings blitz six uh, against Herbert uh, and Evans was playing off and he still got beat deep. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, it's just rough, man. Uh, Sheldor, the meme god. So Adam Thielen had a big night uh, in week three, uh, 11 for 145 and two zigzags uh, and a touchdown. Do you think Adam Thielen maybe still has it? So as a person who loves and respects Adam Thielen and a person who's seen every single snap of Adam Thielen throughout his NFL career oh, with the Vikings, um, he definitely lost a step over the last two years. And I, I understand you know, part of it was financials. Like he wasn't worth the money at this stage. If he were taken less, yes. Um, and and the market bore it out. He signed a, a mid level deal with the Panthers. And I mean, I'm sure he's happy now. Like he's getting wide receiver uh, one looks because uh, for whatever reason they won't play Mingo. And then there's been a bunch of injuries. And Dalton is going to look for the veteran. And uh, I mean, I, I guess it worked out for both sides. I mean, the Vikings got Jordan Addison, who's going to be something special. Uh, Thielen is still getting uh, stats and work. As a wide receiver, one on a bad team in Carolina, even though uh, I'm sure Thielen will like nothing better than catching the game winning touchdown against the Vikings. Just, man. Miles, would you trade a day two pick again this year on interior defensive tackle? If so, uh, who for the price of a second, third round? I don't know, Grady Jarrett, because why not? I don't know, Gr Grady Jarrett, just off the top of my head. It's a like Grady Jarrett. Could we get Dexter Lawrence one time? Could we trade three firsts for Jeffrey Simmons? I don't know. Uh, Clayton uh, Clayton Nyboer, uh, do you think Kirk will keep up the three big games he already had? Yes, because uh, I think that the Vikings will need it. And also pass protection should be getting better uh, with Reisner in. Uh, DMN, is there a place for analytics when it comes to drafting, signing sports ball players to your rooster? Uh, yes, uh, but I, I think that there's – there needs to be a balance. Like I think the, the ways of the old school scouting are done. I think that completely relying on analytics is a little bit foolhardy in the NFL because it's completely different than baseball. Uh, but I, I think that there does need a, to be a balance. But at the end of the day, can the guy play or can he not play? And you can't really have an analytics. Uh, uh, you can't really be analytical on you know, what's in a guy's hat. Right. D does he love the game? Right. Uh, Traveler. Uh, Kevin O'Connell doesn't seem to have a good flow to his play calling. He has a tendency to not get J.J. involved throughout the game and can't get done in short yard situations. I'm worried about him. It, do it does seem like that's the case. Uh, I do worry about the Vikings in short yardage. I do worry about them uh, down the goal line. Uh, sometimes J.J. disappears from the game plan. And, I mean, he's good at scripting, but halftime adjustments, in-game adjustments, I don't know. Uh, Retronic, how much do either the, the Packers – or Lions going three and one on Thursday night affect our chances of winning the division. Well, again, well they could tie. They're not going to tie. I mean, uh, it, it's sort of whatever at this point. I mean, one of them, one of them is going to end up three and one, which is fine. And yeah, go ahead. L like I said, six division games left, uh, as well as uh, three final three games against both of them. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Cole, if we trade Kirk, uh, would you rather see Mullins or Hall start? Hall. Hall. I mean, Mullins is what he is. It, He's a solid veteran backup. He's not going to take you to the promised land. But, I mean, Jaron Hall, you don't know what he's going to be. And it's sort of a sink or swim situation. And it, it's kind of like Brock Purdy. Like, no one thought that Brock Purdy was going to be anything, including the Niners, by the way. Uh, otherwise, they would have not waited to the seventh round to take him. And see what Jaron Hall could do if it comes down to that. Uh, Jude Dude, man. Uh, I don't get all the hate on this team. 0-3 uh, isn't the best start, uh, but this team has talent. We've seen flashes of greatness on both sides of the ball. Do you think they can work uh, out the turnover kinks and make this a 9-1 season? Yes. Plus. Plus. Uh, Joe Marli. Should we use Josh Oliver more in the red zone? Yes. I mean, Josh Oliver is probably the largest tight end I've ever seen outside of uh, Bo Keeft. Uh, his uh, touchdown catch again. Da, da, da. I mean, yes. Um, uh, also, Oliver was a receiving tight end when he came out of San Jose State, and he developed as a blocker. So respect. Uh, Robert Hansen, should a deflection interception count uh, against just the quarterback or the whole team? It should count against uh, the person who was deflected off of. Like, if, if it's clear that it was like a receiver drop and then an interception, that should count on the stats of the of, of the player. Like, so that final interception that's against Kirk, should count against Hawkinson. Uh, Merle Hexham. I fully agree that we should play to win games, uh, but if we were 1-6 of the bye, uh, then should we tank? Uh, again, it's a bit of a fallacy. Like The players and the coaches aren't going to lose intentionally, so then you're just rooting for your team to lose. 
uh, Perry Greek boy. Uh, why don't we run more slant plays where Jefferson feels like a free four to five yards every time? That's a, that's a good point. And also, the thing I love about Jefferson is that he's always – he's very good at avoiding big contact. And also, it seems like he's always – falling forward like, like watch him during a game every single time he catches the ball and gets tackled he, he's never usually going backwards like he's always he always finds a way to just fall forwards and get an extra yard or two i i feel like it's an underrated uh, part of his game uh breaking bogey uh maybe not so much a question but i feel like uh we are being set up for jj leaving minnesota like other young star athletes random mouse kevin garnett etc now nah, we're gonna keep him uh, so we're going to keep JJ, we're going to keep Kirill, we're going to keep a Royce, uh, and we're going to keep, uh, well, obviously we're keeping Anthony Edwards for a while. There you go. Uh, Alan Ulear. Uh, I wish we could come out next week and just be like, F it, all passes. I'm so tired of seeing us lose two yards every time we try to run uh, in a touchdown from inside the three-yard line. It's fair. It's fair. Uh, Bradley Germain, uh, if JJ went to ownership and said he wouldn't resign as long as Quasi GM, would they, uh, fire him to please JJ? I uh, sure hope that's a possibility. I mean, w- we've had instances like that before and it's been quarterbacks basically like him or me. And a lot of times teams side with the GM, All right? So I hope it doesn't come down to that. I don't think that it will. I don't think JJ is that type of player either way. But I think that if this team doesn't have a clear path to win soon, I I, I think J.J. would want out because all he wants to do is win. Uh, Cole Snicker, despite Kirk playing at an MVP level, is getting older, and uh, there's a talented quarterback named Caleb Williams. Oh, oh, if we have the pick uh, 12 to 20 next year, what would it take to get the number one pick? Depends which team ends up with one. Because, I mean, if Eric... hmm. Yeah, Arizona ends up with one. They're taking a quarterback. Houston ends up with one. Well, the Bears have their first-round pick anyway. The Bears are definitely taking a quarterback. Um, I, I I actually don't think you can get up to one. You can get up probably top five and still find a, a damn fine quarterback. Uh, Zeke, uh, where's Osama? I need him on the field. Uh, also, if we give Kirk time to be a top five quarterback in the league, I love you, Andy Skull. Hey, love you too. Uh, Osama, I mean, Pace Jr. is – and uh, is soaking up uh, all the off-ball snaps as well as, I mean, respect. Jordan Hicks is playing damn good football right now. And Asuma may still have that shoulder dinged up, uh, and he's the third man right now. And, yeah, protect Kirk, and he could – well, Kirk's already playing at a top-five level with no protection, man. Uh, just completely raw-dogging it. Uh, Robert Hansen, uh, I believe an interception could uh, only be counted against a quarterback. Uh, duh, 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 yes. Did I have that question before? Hmm. Uh, very, uh, what's your genuine opinion on the Vikings making the playoffs? 50-50. Either they make it or they don't. Uh, William Marshall. Got a hot take as a fitness expert. I'm going to uh, put blame on a certain group, the athletic trainers. Uh, how do we blame Ed Ingram for having the cardio level and motor of Augustus Gloop, the trainers? Uh, who do we blame for Bradbury? Da, 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 da. I, I wouldn't necessarily blame the trainers. or what, what, right, So we're talking about the strength and conditioning coaches, not the medical trainers, right? Which... I think it might be fair. Hey, remember when the Vikings, uh, they, they had the big ball dude as uh, the strength and condition coach, and the Vikings had like five players have torn pecs in, in the same season because they were benching too much. I don't know, man. Uh, praise the sun. Is Kevin McConnell capable of winning a game by more than 10 points? It's a fair question. Uh, DMN. Uh, here's some ammo against the tank for a quarterback crowd. Mac- Patrick Mahomes is the only starting quarterback to win a Super Bowl since Kirk was drafted in 2012. Don't think that's correct. Uh, Zara, Zara goes up. Do Esther Rome's need to set up a GoFundMe to get you some AirPods? Uh, so I, I do have AirPods, but uh, AirPods don't record the, the native video on the iPhone for whatever reason. Uh, yeah, uh, like I'm sure that there's an app that you can do that, but uh, that's why we use the uh, well, we have like a wireless lav mic now to record on the phone, but that's why we've been using like the old school um, attached headphones. That's why. Uh, Ryan Nizra. Aloha, Andy. What up, brother from Hawaii? Uh, do you feel the Vikings have a legitimate shot uh, in drafting Shador Sanders in the 2024 draft as a franchise quarterback in the future? Al- although the Vikings need some help with interior offensive line, defensive line, interior wise. I mean, 
according to people after the Oregon game, we can get Shadur Sanders as a UDFA. No, but uh, I think Shadur is going to be a really solid NFL quarterback. I do. Uh, but, I mean, Saturday's game was just no bueno. Uh, but, yeah, investing in the trenches makes sense. Although, we're, we're get, we are going to do a video where the Vikings, they, they've been taking shots on guards. Hasn't been working out. Uh, Radovich. Uh, flying to see the Chiefs lose. Uh, any tailgate must or things to avoid. So, I don't really... Well, I, obviously, I don't go to games because I'm here. So, uh, I don't have a lot of insight on the tailgate situation. Uh, I know that there's... There's one really big one. I can't remember the name, but it's really damn good. Like you pay a fee, and then they got they got everything everything you need. I, I, so I don't know. Uh, I'm not the person to ask for that. Uh, Gophers tailgate though. Hopefully they release the uh, the stupid uh, Michigan game time. But whatever. Uh, things to avoid. I don't know. Meth. Uh, K Fizzle, uh, do you think the Hitman has one more season in him after this one? I think the season was supposed to be his last dance, uh, but he's doing all right. Not spectacular, though. I think this will be it. I, you know, like I've said from the jump, I think Lewisine is the one-for-one -one replacement for Harrison. I, I don't think that he is the replacement for Metellus or BZ. I think that that's the plan, to have Seen be the strong safety of the future. And the way that his contract structured, I think this is it. Yeah. User. Uh, do you do you agree with the fact that after every loss, a better draft pick should be a silver lining, and people shouldn't uh, want the Vikings to lose tank? I, I think that's fine. I, I think it's sort of a, is what it is. Um, you, you should want your team to win, and if they don't win, sometimes it improves their draft stock. But also, improved draft stock does not mean improved player, and, and history has bore that out. So uh, I think that the correlation between hey, just draft high, you'll get good players, you'll have good team. I think it's incorrect. I mean. Look at the Jets, look at the Lions, look at the, the Browns, historically. All right. uh, R. Rick. Uh, seems like a lot of people want Kevin O'Connell and Quasi fired. At what point do you think the two of them need to go? Uh, they're not going to get fired after this year. Like Honestly, they could go 0-17, and, and ownership isn't going to change All right? because because of what happened last year. And if they're on the right path and there's mitigating circumstances, I, they're not getting fired. So I, Now, I think they could put them on thin ice. For sure, uh, then next year could be an issue, but we'll see. Uh, uh, Anthony Barr back as an edge rusher in that minimum? No. Uh, key key co cap. Uh, can the failure producing games be tracked back to our scouting? Uh, one not changing over when uh, Kevin O'Connell and Camp took office. Seems like the analysts are making some big mistakes at evaluating players. Da, 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 da. I, I think that's fair because uh, just glancing back. Uh, and the Vikings have missed so badly on interior uh, offensive linemen. And largely, it's been the same scouting department. Uh, you know, a couple of the heads got replaced. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a blind spot for the team. Uh, and it doesn't matter if it's Quasey or Rick Spielman. I uh, know you. Would you trade Justin Jefferson if it guaranteed Caleb Williams? It's rough because even though Caleb Williams is a can't-miss prospect, can't-miss prospects miss all the time. And JJ is uh, a generational wide receiver. No, I, I would roll the dice. I'd roll the dice on you know the Vikings landing, um, you know Penix or May or Shador or Bonex or whoever. Uh, Cole Larson. Who's your top picks? Uh, so kind of went over that. Uh, X checkmate. Uh, how does the investment feel worth it with Oliver playing really well? You can two tight ends at the same time, man. Uh, because Hawkinson is playing really well outside of that last play and, and the fumble. Uh, anytime little thing goes wrong, everyone blames Kirk. The guy's balling out. What does he have to do to get some respect? It's never going to happen. Like Some fans are just used to blaming him for things like uh, in 2018, 2019, which, yes, he was the problem. And also 2020 before the bye was probably the worst football I've ever seen Kirk Cousins play. So, yes, he was the problem then. He's not now, but uh, people sometimes it takes people a long time to move on. CT Flame Bala, does anyone think that Kirk that does anyone think that that Kirk that it was fourth down after the Hawkinson first down and that's why he didn't clock it? No, uh, I think he knew that it was uh, first down uh, and should he have clocked it potentially? Uh, but also he delivered an absolute strike uh, that Hawkinson had in both of his hands uh, in the end zone. So what more do you want? Mm. Uh, Nick Bachman. Uh, will we bench Kirk uh, if we start 0-6 after losing to the Bears and he refused to waive his no-trade clause for any team? 
I think that if the Vikings go 0-6 and, and lose to the Bears, I think that all options are on the table. Uh, Mason Large, if the Vikings uh, fall 0-4, should ownership consider firing uh, Kevin O'Connell, Quasi, or both? I mean, maybe, but it's not going to happen. Uh, Walter Cronkite, uh, Robert Zinsky, no question, but the answer, yes. Viking Jeff, uh, is there a quarterback in the league that's better than Cousins uh, but has the worst all-around supporting cast? Mahomes. I mean, Mahomes outside of Kelsey. Yeah. Uh, Savage Boy, uh, can we make the playoffs at 0-3? Well, not 0-3, but like 10-7. and 7. Yeah. Uh, Bradley Germain, uh, if the Vikings end up 1-5, uh, why trade anyone for draft picks? Why trade anyone for draft picks? Uh, they'll be wasted by Quasey anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's the hilarious thing. Like, ownership is not firing Quasey, and uh, everyone wants uh, the Vikings to tank for better draft picks so Quasey can screw them up in their mind. Mm. Uh, Wild Bumblebee, a boomer voice, uh, will this be the Vi- the week the Vikings get off the schneid? Circle the wagons. I miss Boomer, man, although he is kind of back. Miles, remember Hercules Mount Afa? Does he remind you of Ivan Pace Jr., even though they're different positions? Uh, I mean, Pace Jr. is a legit NFL linebacker. Mata Afa was a bit of a tweener, uh, even though I loved his heart and hustle, loved his production at Washington State. Uh, vegan for everything. Why gamble on a quarterback when Kirk is good for another five-plus years? Why not draft O-line the first few rounds? I mean, that's kind of fair. I mean, Stafford's 38. Uh, you know, Brady obviously played forever. Rodgers, well, b- before the Achilles, he's st- super old. And Kirk is only 35. And we point out a bunch. Rich Gannon was MVP of the league in 2002 at age 38. So, and we'll see. Enclave World. Uh, why is this team like this? And do you think Reisner coming in will have a big impact? Uh, they know what they did. And yes. Uh, Pat DeRose. Uh, if we blow out the Panthers, are we back at it, fellas? We are so back. And by a blowout, we mean win by nine points. Uh, user, uh, what two players will have to have a better career, J.J. or T.J. or J.J. Watt or T.J. Watt? J.J. Justin Jefferson will have a better career than J.J. Watt. Ooh, spicy. Uh, and T.J. Watt obviously will have a better career than uh, T.J. Hawkinson, although T.J. Hawk would be pretty good, uh, despite being a Hawkeye. Uh, David Hill, uh, why can't we have good guards? Uh, we have a Ferrari engine riding on a Fiat frame. Fair question. All right. Uh, that's it. That's this week's Q&A. Skull, some production value.